Hello my friends and welcome back to our continued fun let's play Ace Attorney Dual Destinies for the PS5. My name is the Footless Bird, this is your service great channel and today we continue Turnabout Cosmos? Cosmos Turnabout? Turnabout? The uh, Cosmic Turnabout, there it is, yes, we continue the Cosmic Turnabout and uh, we just got done with the part one of the trial. Now we're in investigation mode. Let's go talk to Fulbright, shall we? I hope you're all having a wonderful, fantastic day today. Hi, it's you lawyer people. Welcome to the Space Center. Enjoying a relaxing day off, are you here for, for your for little bucket sightseeing? By the way, speaking of Cosmic Turnabout, uh, do y'all hear about that launch by SpaceX? They, they basically launched a massive skyscraper into space. It was, it was really incredible. And then they like caught it when it came back. Just absolutely amazing. Just so cool. We're here to investigate the scene. Same as you. Do you have any info to share? Boss, if you act all reluctant to give us information, we hit him with the whatever shall we do act. I'm sure he'll fall for it. Got it. Are we trying to catch the unruly family dog here or something? <laughs> info on the case, huh? All right, I'll gladly share some with you. Huh? What just happened? <laughs> Detectives and lawyers seeking truth and justice side by side. I like it. Just take whatever you want from me, you info bandits. I'm in a generous mood today. I don't know. There's something weird about Detective Fulbright today. Well, we need information, so let's just run with it. If you say so. Okay, uh, hi, how are you doing? Crime scene. Detective Fulbright, could you give us permission to investigate the crime scene? There's an officer on guard and we can't get in. Oh, whatever shall we do? Well, that's an easy one. I'll let them know over there to let you in. Investigate your heart's content. Take a week if you need it, a month even. I don't think I had that much time. The judge is gonna be like, well, I have that sort of objection to the month thingy. I want to finish this by today. Maybe tomorrow. Maybe the day after, but that's it. Three days is the most you get for a trial, you hear me? Chill, I have some sex delivered. One of my men gives a mean neck rub. Wow, what the heck is going on here? Uh, no. That's okay, but thanks. Definitely not the Fulbright I know. Who are you and what did you do to the real Fulbright? Detective Fulbright is acting sickly sweet. It's kind of gross, actually. <laughs> Do you think he hit his head or something? Who knows? Whatever the case, it's making our lives way easier. What happened exactly? You were here at the Space Center at the time of the incident, weren't you, Detective? Well, that's right. I was here on a security assignment. The police are required to secure the rocket launchers now? I didn't know that. Um, yes, well, you know us to serve and protect. <laughs> the explosions occurred while I was here on duty, so I started leading the evacuation. He's leaving out a lot of details, but okay. Could you tell us more about what happened? Of course, a bomb went off on the second floor of the main building. Right after that, the one over in Launchpad 1 also blew sky high. So, I merely instructed the visitors and the employees to evacuate to the shelter. The shelter? Well, that's right. There's an evacuation shelter in the basement of the space center. It's there for accidents and emergencies and the like. So, where were you when the first bomb went off? I was on duty on the first floor. It was quite the madhouse, I tell you. The elevator wasn't working on account of the explosion! And the stairs on the second floor were destroyed so we couldn't go that way. Then was it impossible to get out to the basement shelter? No. 
We lowered an emergency ladder from our fourth floor window and escaped that way. It was folding ladder, so it wasn't very stable, but at least it reached the ground. After I secured the ladder, I felt to take another look around for any other survivors. Once everyone else got out safely, I made my way down too and headed to the shelter. Wow, what an ordeal. But climbing down an emergency ladder kind of sounds fun. Thank you, uh, thank you for your answers, Detective. They were very helpful. Just a moment. I have some more information to share with you. But don't tell Prosecutor Blackwell, okay? Wow, and Prosecutor Blackwell usually has you on a short leash, too. Well, never mind that. Haha. <laughs> I thought you should know that there was a witness. A witness? Could you tell us more about this witness? Sure thing! The witness was a space center employee who was on the fourth floor. While she was climbing down, she looked through a window into the third floor lounge. So, she was looking into the crime scene from the outside? That's right! It was just a matter of chance that she saw something important. Now I know what she I don't know what she actually saw yet though. You don't, but that's the most important thing of all. Ha <laughs> ha, <laughs> don't you worry. I'll get around to interviewing her soon enough. She should still be someone here in the space center. You might even run into her. A fourth floor employee, huh? All right, thanks for the info, Detective Fulbright. I really, really hope it's not old hag or old bag or whatever. Please let it not be her. I mean, she just always seems a way to show up and she hasn't shown up in a long time. So I'm like wondering what happened to her and, oh, please don't make that happen. Gee, you are being cooperative, Detective. A little too cooperative even. Yes, well, actually, I, uh... Something you can't talk about? Yes, yeah, something like that. Actually, anyway, anyway, never mind. Don't worry about me. Well, well, I'll be on my way now. What was... What was that all about? Something is definitely going on. I'm going to get it out of him the next time I see him. Oh, okay. I'm not so sure he'll talk about it, though. Well, we have permission to investigate now. Let's head back to the boarding lounge. December 19th, Cosmos Space Center. Boarding lounge. Ah, you two. Detective Fulbright has granted you permission to investigate. He also said I should bring you some sacks, so give you a neck of two if you like. Oh, uh, that's alright, but thank you for the offer. Well, it's time to roll up our sleeves and start investigating. Now, let's see. Where is that diagram again? So, this lounge is on the third floor of the main building. And according to Apollo, this is where he believes a third party killed his friend. Well, let's stop the recap and start looking for traces of this person then. You read my mind, Athena. We'll make that our first priority. There's just one problem, though. This room. It's just so big. Don't worry. We can use this to help us. A space center pamphlet for tourists? Yep, picked it up at the entrance. The master side should come in handy. Let's see. Yep, here it is. A map of the lounge. This is the door we went through to talk to Detective Fulbright. Oh yeah, that's the door with the fingerprint recognition lock. Well, I guess this map will make things a little easier. Space Center pamphlet added to the court record. A pamphlet for visitors to the Space Center includes the diagram of the boarding lounge. Yeah, no more excuses. Let's track down the third person. Wait, there's just one more thing. What's that strange- what's that strange creature moving around outside the window? Oh boss, it's just a holographic image. Oh yeah? I knew that. Phew. Well that's a relief. There should be a button somewhere in this room to turn the image on and off. 
that's what it says in the pufflet. Anyway. The one only reason you're so eager to start is so that you can push that button, isn't it? <laughs> and what's wrong with that? Let's just look for the button. Why would I click clues? Alright, fine. Let's get investigating. Yeah, the sea creature looks really, really cool. I, I, I like the, uh, the little guy in the background. Well, this is the most weird thing here. So this is where they discovered clay. And by weird, I don't mean... You know what I mean. It, it, it sticks out. And with everything else in the room, that, that sticks out over the holographic dinosaur. Okay, Flawless <laughs> Yeah, he was already dead when they found him. Let, let's go take a look at the photo. So, he was stretched out like this, and... Huh. What's that thing look, that looks like a thermos? That's the thing that Pusket Blacko mentioned when I was in court with Apollo. He said that it contains asteroid samples. Oh, right. Detective Director Cosmos mentioned something about that too, didn't he? That they were brought back only five days ago by the probe that HAT-1 launched. I wonder what they look like. Do you think they'll let us see? Let's think about that after we solve the case, okay? That's some pretty futuristic looking furniture over there. According to the pamphlet, those are no ordinary chairs. They're like a music park teacup rides. You can power them yourself, it says. If you spin the table, your chair spins too. Oh, how cool is that? Why would anybody want to have something like that here? It's for astronauts who had trouble with their device on the ceiling. No vertical spins. It says it's a training device that's easy on the eyes and not on the body. Can a person really call themselves an astronaut if they can't handle zero G? At first glance, it looks like a peaceful landscape. But then there's that creature. Didn't the Hope Probe go to some planet? Maybe this is what surface looked like. I don't know. I think it would have made the news if they discovered a creature like that. It did make quite a bit of news though when the Pope came back. Yeah, but the whole probe didn't even go to a planet. It went to an asteroid. That's a big rock kind of thing. Even aliens can't live there. Oh, we can't examine a little dinosaur thing. That's not a dinosaur, seahorse. Space horse. Whatever. No matter how hard I look at it, I can think all I can think of is a torture device. <laughs> but I guess it's a training device for getting used to zero gravity. Uh oh, Athena has an odd glint in her eye. She thinking about trying that thing out. I should try to stop her, but I'm afraid she'll just outmuscle me. Hey Mr. Wright, look at that up there. Oh, hello. Some kind of fragment. It's stuck in tight. Oh, so that's what the glint was all about. That color looks familiar. I think it's part of an oxygen tank. I think you're right. But if that's there, it means Clay's tank ruptured after they arrived at the boarding lounge. So Puskated Black was theory that Mr. Starbuck dropped Clay down the ladder. Must be wrong. This proves that both the astronauts were alive when they reached the boarding lounge. So, Apollo was right. The scene of the murder wasn't the launch pad. Hee <laughs> hee, way to go, Apollo. How did that not get put into my court record? A window, and it's right next to the holographic image, too. I bet it's here to help people see the stark contrast between reality and virtual reality. Way off. It says emergency ventilation. You know, to clear smoke from a fire. See, it's pointing out the virtual insanity of reality. <laughs> so, it looks like there are three doors that lead in and out of this room. Well, let's check. Demo, please. Ta-da! The Space Center pamphlet. We're here at this place that says Boarding Lounge 1. Here are the three doors. Hmm, let's call them Letty, Righty, and Downy. <laughs> People usually say west, east, and south in a case like this, you know. 
Details, details. Anyway, let's take a look at the west door. That door with the rocket icon leads to Lodge Red 1. I know, because it's here on the map. Lodge Red 1 corridor. So that's where we were with the detective. It was filled with smoke after the explosion. Right, next up, the right hand side of the map, or east anywhere. That's the door with the satellite dish I kind of signify communication, aka the control room. Yup, it definitely says control room. Looks like it has another door on the opposite side. They communicate and exchange information with rockets and probes in space from there. So, it's the center of the space center. The space center center, if you will. <laughs> <laughs> Does everybody start to talk like the director Cosmos after they've been here for a while? But it seems like they built a new command center on the south floor. That's what they used for the hat 2 machine. So this control room was empty at the time. I've always wanted to see the inside of a mission control room. And since we're here... I'd love to do that too. But it doesn't look like we'll be able to. They want to give curious kids like you out. So, the door is protected with fingerprint recognition. Only the director can go through. With that much security, I'm, def I'm definitely not the one they're looking to keep out, Athena. <laughs> so apparently, the lock is also hooked up to a backup generator in case of emergencies. Control room door lock added to the court record. The door locked to the east. It can only be operated by the director. Backup power lets it function even when the power goes out. Pretty sure that backup thing is going to be important. Okay, what about the last door? This lower door. Oh, excuse me. I mean, south door. It leads to the elevators. Oh, look at the little robot guy. This is the door we came through when we entered this room, right? Yep, and of course, there was no fingerprint recognition device, so it's open to anyone. But the elevators weren't working at the time due to the explosion. Well, that's about it for the three musket doors of the boarding lounge. <laughs> three musket doors. Thanks. Understanding the layout of the lounge should help us understand the case. That's why I thought we'd better have a good grasp of where all the doors go. Ah, turn me around. Okay, there we go. I wanted to finish exploring this area first, which it looks like we've already done. All right, well, left is always right. Let's spin left. Even though that's technically right, but whatever. You know what this looks like? That looks like the uh, the pod from Every 17. Wow, there's a reference. I don't know how many people will understand. <laughs> I mean, I guess it's all the same. A pod is a pod, right? It's, it's not really that different. These are apparently oxygen capsules. They're for recovery after a training session. I wonder if they could change your voice. Testing, testing. One, two, three. Huh, it didn't do a thing. Oh, it's not helium, Athena. It's oxygen. Is there? Oh, Amir, how thoughtful of them to put one here. Thoughtful. So the ladies can fix their makeup. One's a pants, it's just as important in space as is it Athena. <laughs> I love Athena. Athena always makes me laugh. You never know when you're going to run into some other life form at all. I doubt anybody who thinks like that would ever become an astronaut in the first place. Seriously, Athena is such a bright light. That's what I hope to be to people. It's, I just got done watching uh, Dragon Ball Z Kai. I binge watched it. And there's an episode at the uh, one of the later episodes that say, you know, whenever Goku's in a room, just everything seems brighter and everyone seems happier just by his presence. And I'm like, that's so cool. I want to be like that. What is this? Okay, I keep going in further and further. Hey, I see something shiny down there. Let's take this cover off then. A bullet? What's this? It looks like a metal jelly bean. Oh, come on. <laughs> it's really small, but it's a bullet. It's only about two, three millimeters in diameter. Let's see. That would make the caliber 10? 
Caliburn, first a diamond of a gut spell, right? Yes, but I've never heard of it. Point ten caliber gun before. This bullet must be for a special kind of gun. I bet if you tried find a bullet this small with a regular sized gun, it would just fall right out. Yeah, it must be been a really small gun. I wonder how the bullet ended up here. I mean, we're in the bottom left on the south floor of the right room, uh, according to this map. That's pretty far from where Clay's body was. Maybe the police didn't bother to look there. Yeah, let's leave it, leave it to Fulbright to accidentally hand us the card we need. Bullet added to the court record. Discovered in a gutter that runs along the south wall of the boarding lounge, it was fired from a 10 caliber handgun. Did you say 10? Or did you say 10? Like, I don't know enough about weapons to know the difference. Like, I didn't even realize what a caliber is, and I'll probably forget it in like five minutes, but yeah. I'm not a gun aficionado. I don't like guns. I, I fired a gun once at a uh, shooting range, and uh, I I'm just not a fan. I understand why guns exist. I understand if you have one, it's nothing wrong with that. I'm not making a political statement here. I'm just saying I personally just not a fan of guns. Here's another amazing piece of equipment. Walk on the surface of the moon, it says. Oh boy, I want to try it out. Gravity is weak on the moon, so I bet I could admit air somersaults. We're still on Earth, remember? Besides, connected to the ceiling. Well, at least I could jump really high. There's a sign on the wall that very clearly says, Don't jump too high. Then what good is this thing? <laughs> uh, didn't I say in the beginning, Walk on the surface of the moon? Something over here. What's this? A trap door? It's a trash chute. The cleaning robots throw the trash out from the garbage out from here. The robots do the cleaning? What a futuristic world we live in. Meet the Jetsons. I just hope they don't revolt like they do in science fiction movies. No way, all the robots here are very nice. Actually, was it the one in the large red rock corridor? We could go say hi to it if you want. Okay. Explored all of that. I wonder what this big knob is for. It looks like the knob on a stove. Well, it's the same shape, but I think that's where the similarities end. I mean, it's behind a glass pane. What kind of stove would require a knob security like this? Well, the knob is straight up and down, so if it was for a stove, the butter would be off. Right, if it was for a stove. Still, I wonder what it's really for. Something turned on by a knob that's not a stove. Hmm, how about the rocket engine? If you had to start the engine here, the rocket would take off before you could get in. Then I guess all we can say for now is that it's a mystery knob. Hmm. 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 <clears throat> so, this is a fake print recognition device. I guess you put your hand on this hand mark. Well, I guess what you could try. Now, to line up my hand up with the outline. Don't, Athena. This thing is related to the case. Get your prints all over that, and the next thing you know, you'll be named suspect. Wah! How can it be so clear to a little girl like me? <sighs> I'm not buying those tears, Missy. God, I love Athena. She's so great. Let's see. This door is, uh, where's that pamphlet? Here we are. It's the door to the corridor that leads to that red one. We went through it earlier when we went to talk to Detective Fulbright. So I guess the security lock must be disengaged now, right? They say the corridor was filled with smoke at the time of the bombing. This thing beside the door. This must be the fingerprint recognition device. Which reminds me. I think Prescott and Blackwell talked about it at the time. The notion of a third party in Launchpad 1 is utterly absurd. Just to enter the area from the lounge, one must pass through a door guarded by a fingerprint recognition device. And allow me to state up front that there are precious few with the clearance to do so. 
Then does this mean that the bomber's prints were verified by the system? But the number of authorized personnel was supposed to be really small. Voila! Fingerprint powder! Hey! I missed this! I love fingerprinting! That was so much fun. I bought it just in case something like this came up. I found it at the office. I've been just itching for a chance to use it. Wow, way to think ahead. Now let's test the fingerprint recognition device to see what we can find. You got it! Now just pick us up here and a little over there and... Aw, oh, I can't do it! Oh, I miss doing that! I wanted to do it! It's just so... It's such a nice feeling when you light up the old entire screen and then you wipe it off and you see it appear. It's, it just feels good. Let's see what we have here. Oh, we got something. Ah, uh, it's only a single set of pins. Uh, isn't that a good thing? Sure wish we could figure out whose prints these are. Although, I doubt we'll be as lucky to get the corporate sprint on the first try. Well, I'm going to bet that Detective Fulbright has some fingerprint data. Right, and there's the security footage of this door, too. Yes, here it is. It came up in court the other day. I wish we could see the part of the footage just after this bit. Oh, because that would be right before the murder, wouldn't it? Let's ask the detective. But the money's in, he'll probably show it to us right away. Yeah, he's in almost too good of a mood today. Let's go see if we can find him once again. Uh, we're done with this room. I think we are done with this room. Aren't we? Oh. Oh, hello. It's like a web or is that a bullet? Is that, you know, dented glass? A bright purple sky, plenty of greenery, and a tranquil lake. The idyllic scene stretches on as far as the eye can see. It's beautiful, but it lacks something to make it truly captivating. Guess that is just a cobweb? Hello, what's this? There's some kind of panel with two buttons on it here. Just push it. That's the available principle of buttons. There are such things as buttons left unpushed, you know. Aww, see what's has gone. Hey, the giant holographic image disappeared. Yeah, though that side of the wall seems kind of barren without it now. I wonder if the, uh, the cobweb's still there and it's not a cobweb, but it's pierced glass. Still, let's see if we can find anything new with the image off. Ha, ah, I was right. Still there. Hey, Mr. Wright, take a look at this. It looks like a bullet hole. Great find, Athena. It's pretty big. Where I this shot must have been using a pretty large gun. You think so? Based on my experience, I say this was fired from a regular pistol. But whatever says it was, somebody fired a gun in here, right? Apparently. This is a important fact. Do you see a bullet around somewhere? No, the police must have taken it though. Oh, come on, we already found the bullet. Bullet hole added to the court record. A single bullet hole was found in the boarding lounge. The bullet itself is missing. Let's ask Detective Fulbright about this bullet hole later. Welcome to the Space Center, guests. Welcome. Yikes, what in the world? My name is Ponko. 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 Alright, well, it looks like we found the, um... We found the, uh... The witness. And the witness is not Old Hag, thankfully. Are you sightseeing? Are you lost? Are you looking around? Choose one. I will guide you. It's a robot. I am not a robot, I am Ponko! Psychological observation and, um, navigation companion! Ponko! Ponko! Well, I'm glad we got that cleared up. You know, it's weird because there was a time when the, uh, the letters, you know, I would say the letters P-O-N-C-O, -O, and I heard, you know, maybe that's just her dragging the letters out. I think she is actually saying the letters here. 
P-O-N-C-O, Punko. Yeah, I'm pretty sure she's actually saying those letters. Well, I'm glad we got that cleared up anyway. Oh, Punko, I've missed you. Huh? Do you know this thing, Athena? Oh, uh, she, um, uh, showed us around the last time when I came here with Apollo. Oh, you're such a good girl, Punko. That's a good girl. Oh, thank you. I'm so happy. So very happy. Aw, it is adorable. Wow, a guide robot. That's pretty cool. My name is Phoenix Wright. Nice to meet you. I don't know you. I don't know you. Huh? Ouch, that hurt. Oh, she has to register people she meets for the first time. Please register in Punko. Certainly. Commencing guest registration. Please tell me your name. A nickname is fine too. His name is Phoenix. A bit overly familiar, but I'll allow it. Phoenix, please let me get a good look at your face. Oh, uh, sure. Registering. Facial registration sequence complete. We are now officially friends! Nice to meet you, Phoenix. Huh. This robot is pretty cute. Yeah, I was saying the same thing. I like it with the protagonist and I are on the same page. You made a friend, boss. Isn't it great? Phoenix, Athena, allow me to guide you right this way. Oh, goody. Let's go, boss. Could go where? Wow, look at this place. Super cool. The 718th Cosmos Space Center Space Museum. Speaking of giant rockets. Oh, look at the aliens! Oh, wow. What is this place? Is, is that rocket real? Welcome. Welcome. The Space Museum is open to the public every day of the year from 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. Learn about the history of the nation's space development in the Hat 1 project. The rocket is just a replica, but it's the same size as a real one. The Space Museum. Oh, here it is on the map. Okay, so it's on the exact opposite side of the main building from Launchpad 1. Space Center pamphlet updated. Uh, includes diagram uh, the cross of uh, the boy lounge and a cross section of the Space Center. Three people. Ask me anything, anything, I will explain. Hat one? This is quite the place. I can't believe we got to see a rocket this close up. This is a replica of the hat one that was launched seven years ago. It's exactly like the real hat one, inside and out. It's little brother, the hat two was supposed to launch the other day. I wonder if Poco knows why the launch pad was can why the launch was cancelled. Over there is an exhibit about the launch seven years ago. Check it out, check it out. Spacesuits, photos, newspaper articles. I'd like to come here again on a day off. Yeah, this place sounds awesome. First the aquarium now here. This game has a lot of great uh locations. Hey, what's this a photo of? Phoenix, that's the south of the Hat One Project. Wow. Oh, look at Ponko. Ponko's got like a bandage over his head or something. I wonder why. How the little guy get hurt? And they got Cosmos. You got Clay. And um, what's his name? Starbuck. As well as two other ladies I have not met yet. Phoenix, that's the staff of the Hat One Project. Oh, there's Mr. Starbuck. He looks so young and so different. Ah, and that's... That's... What is it, Athena? Is something wrong? Oh, then nothing. I just thought Mr. Starbuck looked really young too. That's all. Well, it was seven years ago after all. It's a young guy standing next to Mr. Starbuck. Is Clyde Tannen. The victim. So, they were mentor and protege even way back then. And he's got even one of the staff jackets. He looks just like a regular staff member. 
No, Clay was still a student then. He just borrowed one of Solomon's old jackets. Ah, uh, okay. That makes sense. Clay would have still been in high school seven years ago. Everybody looks so happy. That hasn't really changed much in like seven years, has he? The Space Museum is great. What fantastic exhibits. No penguins though, but still cool. This area used to be launch pad too. That's why the only entrance is on the third floor. Wouldn't it be better if they just made a new ground floor entrance instead? There was talk of it, but they had to scrap the plans because of the budget cuts. Budget cuts! Budget cuts! We need more money! Money! Who would record that kind of information into a guide robot? <laughs> Someone looking to get money from his customers, probably. While it was in space, the hat one launched a probe called Pope. The whole probe collected some samples from an asteroid and returned five days ago. That's what Director Cosmos said, too. He told us it came back the day before Clay was killed. And here it is, the Hope Space Probe. Hmm. I think I've seen that logo somewhere before. It's such amazing, but there's such great artwork in this whole episode. Let's see. Oh yeah. The capsule that the victim was carrying. Just look at that. It's so beautiful. I think I had the same logo. I think it could be seen in this photo attached to the autopsy report. Maybe she'll give us some more info if I show it to her. Watch that layout. The way the Space Center Launchpad is set up is really cool. Would you like me to tell you about it? Would you? The setup of the launch pad. Go gentle on my spiky haired mind. I want to know. I want to know. Phoenix wants to know too. <laughs> Great. Now Athena's got a case of Poco Itis. <laughs> Hooray! I will tell you then. The rocket is built right inside the launch pad structure. When the rocket is complete, it's moved along with the launch pad over the rails. And brought into position at the launch site. Isn't it cool? Isn't it? We used to have a big budget, so that's how we could build it all. It's very cool. A grand setup that suits an important place like Space Center. I guess everyone is hoping for a bigger budget next year, myself included. Would always be nice. I'm guessing the whole thing is upgraded for the Katovim, huh? That it is, but it can also be upgraded for the new command center too. Either way, the safety lock and the boarding launch has first to be disengaged. I guess before a big move like that can be carried out, there are all kinds of procedures. I would love to see the launch pad be moved. What's the next one scheduled for? Searching data. All future plans have been put on hold. Because of the bombing and the murder, I'll bet. Which is perfectly understandable. Well, when was the last time it was moved? Searching data. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, that answer isn't in my answer database. Why not? That seems suspicious. I guess Poco can only answer certain questions. Hmm. I'm sorry, I'm afraid I don't know anything about that. Okay, no problem. I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry, I wasn't helpful. I'll try to do better in the future, please don't hate me. Aw, the poor thing. I feel bad for asking. All right, well, let's not make him sad. Let's just uh, show him the autopsy report, right? Punko, do you recognize this capsule here in the top right? Checking registered data. I know, I know, it's the Hope capsule. It was carried inside the Hope probe. It contained the asteroid samples, right? Yes, it was designed to store the samples gathered by the Hope probe. It's been stored in the safe in the launch pad 1 ever since it returned to Earth. It must not be removed! It must not be removed! Wow. Don't worry, Punko. The people in charge already know what happened. 
They do, they do. I must ask them later. So the capsule was being kept on Launchpad 1, huh? Maybe Clay was trying to carry it to safety after the explosion. The space center staff must have really been excited to finally get the capsule back. But it's a pity this incident occurred before they got a chance to check the contents. Well, the police took it as evidence, so they'll have to wait a little longer. Whole capsule ad added to the court record. Found in the victim's possession, it recently returned from a 70-year mission and contains asteroid samples. Well, we certainly learned a lot about the Space Museum. Thank you, Poco. You explained everything very well. I love to explain. Thank you for listening. Thank you. You two are like old friends. It's hard to believe you just met recently. Hehe, <laughs> it's because Poco is so friendly. Well, what should we do? Investigate next. Let's go find Detective Fulbright. We have things to ask him about. Let's see. The security footage and the fingerprint data, was it? Okay, then let's go back to the launch pad 1 corridor. Bye, Poco. See you later. Come again, come again, and don't forget to visit the gift shop. <laughs> Poor Poco. What a Dickensian life we are all forced to leave. Dickensian? What the heck does that mean? Hold on, hold on, hold on. What is Dickensian life? Well, it's based on Charles Dickens, maybe, but... What is considered Dickensian? Modulars often describe bleak scenes of hardship. Aww. Uh, homeless families, hungry children, squalid living spaces, or unsafe work conditions as Dickensian. Or Dickensian. Uh, definitions of Dickensian, adjective of like the novels of Charles Dickens, especially with regards to poor social and economic conditions. Okay, so basically times are tough. Got it. Basically, he's trying to sell money, or he's trying to get us to to buy goods for money, so that way they can raise money to pay for everything that's going on. Ah, I forgot where to go. Quarter, that's right. December 19th, Cosmos Space Center. Launch quarter. A launch pad one quarter. Hmm, what should I do? Which path is a path of justice? There's Detective Fulbright. He still seems to be lost, even though it's a state corridor. Let's hope he's still in a cooperative mood as well, then. If he doesn't cooperate, then I'll just have to use my powers on him. You mean that lady in distress bit? <laughs> Poor horsey. We found a bullet hole in the wall at the crime scene. You did? Our team found that too. It was Detective Arm who fired that bullet. Detective Arm? That's right! A one shot for the defendant. Was it really such a high threat situation that she needed to do that? And I like how she's been conveniently removed from the picture, huh? I'm afraid I don't know the details. What with Detective Arm gone and all? But I thought there were two people who discovered the crime scene together. We already know Director Cosmos will testify. So tomorrow will be about what he knows. Yeah, finding he's not the killer. Hey, you're pretty smart. That's exactly what we're planning to serve as a main course. I hope it goes down easy. Think about data. Detective, we'd like to run a comparison on some fits we found in the party lounge. Hmm, oh yes, I just happen to have compiled the print data of everyone related to the case. I can always make another copy for myself, so it's all yours. Consider it a gift. This is quite a bit of data. Well, when I said everyone, I meant it. Prosecutor Blackwell said to dig deep, so that's what I did. Ha ha ha, it sure took a while though. Well, he got Apollo's and my prints. He even got pins for all of the robots. <laughs> I guess when Blackwell said to dig deep, Fulbright didn't bother to ask how deep. Ah, place fingerprints are here too. 
I pressed him with his glove during the investigation. We had to get his fingerprints to confirm his identity after all. I still can't believe he took off his glove to get the fingerprints. Yeah, well, you can't blame me for thinking they're important in this case. There are lots of doors that require fingerprint verification in the lounge. So, depending on his prints we find, it can completely change the tide for both of our sides. Makes sense. After all, the culprit's prints did get them past the fingerprint lock somehow. Oh, and take this picture, it might come in handy. Isn't this just a photo of the launchpad one door? Yep. But Pascal the Black Will seemed really interested in him for some reason. Huh. What's so important about this door? It beats me, but boy, could you see the gears in his head going to hyperdrive at it? Sounds like this is going to be a major point of contention tomorrow. Hey, don't forget about the pink comparison, boss. Right. Detective Fulbright, do you think you could run this test for us right now? You just leave it to me, and justice we trust! Okay, here we go. Well, it looks like it was Mr. Starbuck who opened that security door. He must have opened it when I went to go board the rocket. His heart must have been full of hopes and dreams for a space adventure right then. Launch by one door lock updated in the court records. Starbuck prints were found on the door lock. Also see photo taken after the incident. Something for lost and found. I'll be sure to take care of it. No, no, no. This is an important piece of evidence. Okay, so the failure state's really fast. Oh! The victim went to all that trouble to save the defendant. And then he was mercilessly killed. Is there no justice in this world? Justice was trampled underfoot that day. Well, that's right. Acts of justice and selflessness are not always rewarded. It pains me to say it, but I've come to realize the truth in that recently. Sounds like he and his personal philosophies are going through a midlife crisis. Okay, so it seems like there's two fail states. When the explosions occurred, everyone was on the verge of panic. But the important thing is that no one from the general public was hurt. And it was all thanks to the evacuation effort we headed up. At after that, you escaped the building yourself as well, right? Me escape nonsense! I want to run straight towards the blast. It was the other detectives who stopped me. We gotta get you to somewhere safe, sir, they said. Maybe you should take your own evacuation order more to heart next time, detective. Detective, about the security footage that was taken by the boarding lounge one camera. Oh, that footage? Go ahead and ask me anything you like about it. Is there any way I could see a little more of the part just after this? Easy as pie. I'll be glad to show you. Here we go. Huh? The screen went blank? Yes, apparently the after effects of the explosion damaged the wires. So there's no footage after this point. Ha ha ha. But did they say that something was activated even though there's no power? Why did you say so in the beginning? Security camera video updated. The video I mean to me that scene. I, I, I can only imagine that's going to be important. Something definitely seems to be up with you, detective. You're unusually cooperative. Well, uh, I just figure if we work together, we get that much closer to justice, right? But it seems like something's really been bothering you. You don't have some ulterior motive, do you? What? I don't know what you're talking about. I would never do something like that. Oh. Psych locks. I, I was about to say, wait, 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 what just happened? Because for a second there, I thought it was Apollo. This has been a while. This kind of shocked me there. I, w I was thinking, wait a second, these are Cyclops. Why are Cyclops appearing? 
It's been a while, but those are definitely psych locks. Hmm, did you just mouse psyched? Is there something I should be psyched about? No, no, psych lock. It's a system of locks on the secrets of a person's heart. I can see when people are trying to hide those secrets by using the power of this Magatama. Presenting evidence can break those locks and reveal any secrets they're hiding. But well, Mr. Wright, how much did they book you out of that for the piece of rock? If you've been swindled, I know some lawyers I can introduce you to. I'm more than capable of representing myself, thank you very much. It isn't some kind of fraud, it really works. A friend gave it to me a long time ago. But I guess seeing is believing, allow me to show you. Yes, we know how to do Magadama. We don't need a tutorial this far into the game. Why are you being cooperative? But then again, you know, if you haven't played the originals, you wouldn't know what these are. So. I think you're hiding something, detective, so why don't you just tell us about it? Hmm, what to do? Which path is the path of justice? Detective Fulbright is really in agony. I bet this is the issue he's so torn up over. Justice. I really understand what's been bothering you, detective. I truly do. Something happened that goes against your principles, isn't that right? Oh uh, no, I don't know what you're talking about. Until the explosion occurred, everything was just fine. That's a pause line. Is that a fact? Yep, peaceful as peaceful can be. Everyone was singing happy tune as they did their job. You never saw a more relaxed guard detail for a routine rocket launch. I don't think the guard detail was as relaxed as you claim as long as this exists. Um... Guard detail. Before the explosions, what was supposed to happen here was a rocket launch. And yet, security was so tight, they even brought in a special task force. I'd hardly describe that as a relaxed guard detail. <laughs> now, just hold on one moment. The entire nation had their eyes on this extremely important rocket launch. That's why I was called on a special security detail. As versatile as you are, I can certainly believe that's true. But I say it's very strange that this person would be part of that detail from the outset. Why would a bomb detective be here? Take that! Detective Arms specialized in bomb cases. The fact that she was here on hand kind of knew that something was going on. It means you people knew there was a possibility that a bombing would occur. Mmm, you got me with the right! <laughs> Alright, cool. That was so bad. What you can't say. Alright, I concede. You win, it's just as you say. A few days before the launch, they were warned about a potential bombing. But the plane to launch went ahead in spite of the threat. But why? What would they plan to do if someone got hurt or killed? Yeah, I know, I know. The decision to move forward wasn't exactly just, was it? How was the warning delivered? By phone and directly to Director Cosmos. But the police department instructed everybody to keep it under wraps. That's a big thing to keep quiet about. No wonder why you were so upset. But it's not only that, I've been distraught about Prosecutor Blackwell as well. Prosecutor Blackwell? Well, as his handler, I'm sure you have had a lot of difficulties. Well, that's not it. It's a question of justice! I've been wondering about why he's allowed to stand in court. The reason he's still prosecuting? Detective Fulbright, please tell us everything that you know. Yeah, I've always wondered that too. He's a cool prosecutor, but at the same time, he's like a murderer, right? 
Well, talking to you folks about it would definitely be breaking the rules. Never mind that. What are the rules? But things to be broken, right? Well, to tell you the truth, having a prisoner act as a prosecutor is highly irregular. Hmm, you don't say. I think we guessed that much. So, why is it being allowed? I've been wondering and wondering and wondering that all along. So, you weren't told why either, huh? No, I guess you would have came from pretty high up the ladder. Yeah, it would have to have. But, Pasquette Black Will told me once. The hunt I've been on for the Phantom of seven years ago, past, continues even still. Seven years past, another game that has a seven years thing. A phantom, huh? I'm not one of the friendly variety either, I gather. Haunted for seven years. This phantom of seven years past. Any idea who he, what he was talking about? Not a clue. But it seems to think that this phantom is behind this whole incident somehow. Wait a minute. He thinks they may be connected to this case. Yep. This case has way too many similarities to what happened seven years ago. For starters, that case happened right here at this very space center too. And in both incidents, a threat was issued via telephone. So that's why Prosecutor Blackwell thinks the incident is the work of this phantom. Well, that's not the entire reason. I mean, if you want to talk about seven years ago. Well, that's when Prosecutor Blackwell was found guilty of murder. That messy case is what started the whole dark age of the law. I wonder if he actually killed someone. I wonder if he's framed and he's chasing after the person who got away with it. So you see how this phantom and Prosecutor Blackwell's conviction might be related. Yeah, I can see why he'd think that. This incident and that phantom, not to mention Blackwell's past, it's almost inconceivable that they would come to a head here. Um, this might sound crazy, but Prosecutor Blackwell can possibly blame Mr. Starbuck as a fit of the person, right? I mean, he was acting kind of strange for the last time, and all. Hmm, the prosecution appears to be ready as well. Silence. <sighs> not yet. I'm not quite ready yet. Hmm? No, I don't think he thinks Mr. Sobuck is his fandom. But I do get the feeling that he thinks the defendant has ties to them. Which is why he's acting so impatient. He's got a personal grudge against Mr. Starbuck. And that's not real justice! I've always trusted in Prosecutor Blackwell's judgment until now. But this time, I'm just so overwrought about it all. If he's lost his ability to think rationally, I'm afraid it might lead to a false conviction. I've never seen Detective Fulbright so tormented. This must be why he's been so cooperative. Don't worry, that's exactly what we defense lawyers are working to prevent. I feel bad for Pascal Blackwell, but I'm going to be ready for your team this time. But don't tell him that! You have to promise me you won't! Detective Fulbright, I guess I was wrong about you. I swore to reform Prosecutor Black Will and make him a valued member of society again. So I could just sit by and watch him give in his emotions to tear the defendant apart. You are the only ones who can stop him in court. You really care and want what's best for Prosecutor Black Will, don't you, Detective? Leave the courtroom to us. It's not like we want a guilty verdict, either. I was hoping you would say that. I'm really grateful to the two of you. To show my thanks, I'll give you another bit of information. It's about the eyewitness. I saw her hanging around the Space Center entrance a little while ago. Oh god, it wasn't... 
It wasn't the robot. I don't think it's old hag. I think it's one of the other two uh, people from that picture. Oh, really? Then let's go find it, Mr. Wright. Yeah, although this is a great spot to stop because with this line on the screen, I know exactly what I need to do next time, which is to go find her. Uh, I can't say enough about how much I appreciate you guys. You all are the number one YouTube community on YouTube, and I just... I'm in awe of you. Thank you for all that you do. Much love to you. I hope you have a wonderful, fantastic, amazingly awesome day. And until next time, so long and take care. Thank you for watching this video. Feel free to comment on what you saw and what you'd like to see next. I always love to hear your thoughts. But before we go, please remember that you matter and you are brilliant and you are loved and you should always be true to yourself. Never let the world tell you any different. Much love to you from your friendly, feathered, flightless bird.